They were headed for the prime recovery area in the Atlantic, where the USS Guadalcanal waited. Gemini 10 re-entered the atmosphere, and the onboard camera gives a brief view of the long descent. As recovery forces watched, Gemini 10 was sighted. It was lowered slowly over the water by the large main parachute. Rescue helicopters hovered about, and the crew of the Guadalcanal was ready for recovery. The ship band was already playing triumphantly as the spacecraft splashed down. Early data indicates that Gemini 10 landed less than five nautical miles from the planned impact point. Experienced rescue swimmers were in the water quickly, attaching the flotation collar to the spacecraft. The crew elected to be picked up by helicopter. Pilot Collins was the first to be hoisted up. Welcome aboard the Guadalcanal in traditional fashion. Astronauts Young and Collins had concluded a flight of three work-filled days. Gemini 10 accomplished its primary objective, rendezvous and docking. In addition, eight out of nine secondary objectives were fully or partially completed. Among the firsts logged in the records of space flight were the first dual rendezvous. This was achieved with both an active and a passive target. The first use of a target vehicle for maneuvering thrust. This is a primary technique of the manned lunar mission. The first retrieval of equipment from another orbiting object. And the first time three extravehicular activities had been performed. Gemini 10 also reached the highest altitude of any manned spacecraft, 414 nautical miles. In the words of its program manager, Charles Matthews, Gemini had fully matured and become operational.